G'day everyone and welcome to our next video. Today we are tackling top 13 potential Monarch mechanics. We've been sitting around wondering what they could possibly bring out in Monarch. And so today we look at possibilities, yeah? Now, a lot of the influence I believe um, from Jim White and the rest of the guys, they're way ga uh, card gamers from way back. So am I and a lot of the games from way back and the magic that they had we took a look at some of them um, they included such personal favorites of mine um, star wars ccg you know we got vampire in there or the old jai had and just various other games that we just looked at the mechanics some are non-existent for obvious reasons but also magic and where magic came from as well and the mechanics that they started introducing and wondered whether flesh and blood could also introduce these things as well so we got 13 together to talk about so i wanted to present these and get some discussion happening in the community um just a bit of fun yeah because we don't know what's coming out in monarch it's a, a closely guarded secret and i think that's fantastic it's going to mean when monarch comes out it's you know, it's going to be amazing. That's what we're expecting. But it's also fun just to have a guess and a gander. And then, you know, if any of this comes true, we can always point back at this video and say, you know, we pinged it. <laughs> All right, let's start taking a look, guys. Um, supports and retainers. Do we think that they're going to have... Um, like little supports and retainers with our heroes like um you know like a bat a robin to a batman or anything like that and how would they actually come into play do they come in as part of the chain or you know do they sit out to the side like you would a potion and then they can be used at various uh times or thrown in the way of a combat or anything like that so that's one that was uh talked about from a few people and it's a possibility you know maybe all right dual use cards i think this is inevitable whether for monarch or for any future um set we will see dual use cards now that might be card is um slashed right through the middle and it's got the two pictures of the two cards that it has you know, they open this up with Twinning Blade, where Twinning Blade could be played upside down or any which way, it's um, the full art version. So I don't see that it's too much of a far fetch, and I think it's a really good one. Dual use cards, and could you imagine dual use cards that were not generic, but usable by uh, a few heroes? maybe based on something else that we're going to come across as well so keep that in mind dual use cards for one of the future ones that is coming up poison mechanic i've mentioned this on the um on the fan page already much like in magic where you get a counter and every turn you lose a life for um for having a poison counter on you whether they introduce this or not don't know in a way there's something within ranger with that but as we have a possible assassin class coming up possible poison mechanic may be a thing we don't know or whether they concentrate more on you know physical assassination rather than the subversive stuff such as poison flip characters are we going to see something like this in the future where you've got a character and as they go down in life much in, like in Dragon Ball and then they awaken. Um, will we see that? Or will we see something like um, like in Innistrad where you've got a character and then there's like a werewolf side or something like that? You know, the possibilities are endless. We just don't know. So yeah, flip characters. Possible and doable location so think back to these jewel cards there's various characters that come from a land and are not um, stuck to like their what type of hero they are so i believe um kasai and uh reinar or uh Kao 
might come from that same location, even though they're different classes, yeah? Imagine being able to play locations on a table and imagine dual use cards based on the location. So various heroes can play them from different classes. I think the possibilities are endless in that regard. But locations, they would be played down as maybe a sideways card or something, possibly giving bonuses to the hero. Yeah. And I think that allows for more of um, a political angle within the game as well. We already have somewhat of a political angle with um, Pit Fighter. Now, if you were to introduce locations that actually gave benefits based on, you know, you could have, and I don't know how they would introduce it, but politics in regards to a court location and what bonuses that could give, um, you know, preventing, um, making an attack next turn costs an extra, yeah, possibilities are endless. Don't know where I'm going with this. I'm just saying it's a possibility, yeah? All right, milling mechanic. I do not want to see this at all. It is a possibility. Last night I was talking to one of the guys here and I believe he heard James saying that milling will not be coming into the game ever. I really hope that's the case. I hate milling myself. It is such an unfun mechanic and it doesn't allow an opponent to be part of the game. So I really hope it's not coming in at any time ever within the game but you know what we're talking possibilities here of what could be in the game you know what milling could easily be in the game with a type of character i just hope it's not what's our next one we've got weapon and armor upgrades however you want to spell armor now so could you imagine having a spell put on your armor maybe you know defends a little bit better or does something else or maybe you're able to put some type of uh, magic on your weapons and this is possibly stays in play you possibly put the card under your weapon and while it stays under the weapon it has a particular bonus and this is a consistent thing this this is pure power creep at this point it is a possibility i can see it definitely being done if they wanted to don't know what's in store but like I said, one of the possibilities as well. What's our next one? Two cards in Arsenal. Uh, on a discussion last night, they thought that uh, definitely Ranger could have this. But it is an interesting possibility. Could you imagine something like a bag of holding from D&D? &D, um, where you can actually hold extra things and using the Arsenal for that type of a thing comes back to weapon and armor upgrades maybe you're able to upgrade an arsenal to hold two cards that is very interesting there is another possibility in this from an older card game that would assist with um, like a two cards in arsenal type mechanic so let's keep going all right replenishing armor and weapons now could you imagine a, this could be a location such as a forge or anything like this that replenished armor or replenished weapons in the case of maybe um, broken weapons. Yeah, we already have that with the needles. So being able to replenish armor or weapons and maybe it's a high cost, but uh, something's been able to be done for it. Maybe you throw out a three pitch to get an extra one back on your armor after it's been uh, fixed or something like that. Now, in saying all this and with a lot of these, you've got to remember that these guys are in combat at the moment. So I think a lot of these go away from the theme of flesh and blood, but they are possibilities. Uh, but I do feel it takes away from that combat, that these two are locked in a combat and that... Um, it's happening right there and then. And there is nothing outside of that yet. Yeah, it's those two locked in combat. But we don't know. We don't know what the future holds, where they need to take the game in order to keep it going. So, like I said, possibilities and maybe this is it. Maybe got retainers that are able to replenish armor and that we don't know, yeah? Interesting. 
All right, next one, sideboard or shields mechanic. This is what I was talking about when I was referring to the two cards in Arsenal. Now, in the Star Wars CCG way back when that Decipher used to make, they had, they came, the game continued and progressed along to a certain point where they introduced what were call, called shields. And that was one card that you would put on the table and then you would have these shield cards, about 10 of them. And they would be generic cards that were very useful within the game and 10 cards would go under this one card and you could use three within the game, okay? So for Flesh and Blood, how I would see that working would be very much your Sink Below, maybe an Unmovable, uh, Foreseen, um, anything like that would remain there. So they wouldn't form part of your deck but you would have three cards from that 10 that you would be able to use throughout the game when you've got nothing in your hands that um, is of better use. I don't think it would be great for the game. I think it would open it up to effectively having more than four cards in hand and really takes away from that, um, from what makes Flesh and Blood so special. We are, we're just talking possibilities. I'm going to keep saying it. So, you know, what could be added to the game for the future? Yeah. So sideboard or shields mechanic, maybe. I prefer not. All right, what, what's another suggestion we got? Resource character, all right. So a character that makes more effective use of their resources and affects yours. Could you imagine that? So a not so powerful character in regards to the cards that they play, but they're able to get maybe an extra resource and lower your ability to play resources. Could you imagine a character coming up against them where you could not play, um, any of your one resources could not be played as a resource, yeah? Could you, how impactful would that be, yeah? All those red liner decks would be like crushed by something like that and this resource character slowly picks you off, yeah? it would really open up the mechanic depends on how uh, popular such a character would be that people would have to play various colors throughout their decks and not just stick to like red lining and yeah could be interesting so what have we got there we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven we got two more suggestions for possibilities that could be introduced within flesh and blood Next one, a character that burns cards for resources. All right, so imagine your standard character who is able to just normally pitch and play, yeah? But imagine they could get one extra resource by not effectively using their card as a resource and throwing it under their deck, but they burn their cards, yeah? So they will throw out a one pitch and burn it for two pitch. Whew. Yeah, so effectively their deck is running out because they're burning, they're not recycling cards. So they could be losing the game if um, something, like imagine Guardian just holds off their attacks, bang, 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 and they've got no cards in deck because they're not recycling. Stuff like that, maybe a character like that can't, well, they won't be able to be um, putting cards back in their deck because they're burning them. So yeah, it is, an interesting one. I think it is a very big possibility that they could introduce a character like that. And now number 13, I think is a huge possibility as well. We are still not understanding the whole copper, silver and gold mechanic. But could you imagine another win condition where if you built up a certain amount of coin, you win the game. Now, I'm just going to throw a number out here. Imagine five gold worth, yeah? You got five gold worth in the game and you win You win the game. So at the moment, we've got gold being earned by hits. So yeah, we don't know where that mechanic's going, but it could definitely be a possibility with Monarch and the one after it all being very city based, if that's the case. You know, this goes back to what I was talking about with the locations and introducing more of a political type thing. Maybe the buy a win mechanic 
could be in it very interesting especially if you are only getting coin from such things from your attacks yeah yeah so that's the 13 that we came up with there are no more so let's just go through them once again as the possibilities that could be any of these one of these could be um rear its head within monarch supports and retainers all right let's give these ratings out of 10 shall we i didn't actually really prepare for this supports and retainers possibility i think I would go up to as far as a 6 or a 7 as a possibility out of 10 that we would see something like this in Monarch or the next set. Some type of mechanic with supports or retainers. Dual use cards, high possibility. I would give that a 7 or an 8 for a dual use cards. Poison mechanic, well up there, especially if we're seeing the Assassin 7 or an 8 out of 10 really interested in what you guys think as well so make sure you get this down in the comments and give me your ratings for each ones or ones that you totally don't agree with totally don't want to see like the milling mechanic please don't bring that in flip characters i don't i honestly don't think we're going to see them especially in monarch possibility out of 10 maybe a four yeah four out of ten locations i think look this is a really interesting one and I'm going to give this about a 5 or a 6 for location. My heart's telling me about 4. I don't think the game's ready for it. But, um... Yeah, let's go with 4. 4 out of 10 for locations. Milling mechanic. Big old 0. If I have to give a number between 1 and 10, I'm going to pick 1. No milling mechanic. Weapon and armor upgrades. I don't really think we're going to see it. A interesting proposal. About a 3 out of 10 for me. So, yeah, we'll be able to look back at this video and see later on. Two cards in the arsenal. Right at the moment, no. I don't think we're going to see it. So, 3 out of 10 for Monarch. Maybe in the future higher. But for Monarch, no. 3 out of 10. Replenish armor or weapons. Once again, about a 2 or a 3 out of 10 for Monarch, I believe. Sideboards and shields. Look, I'm going to get be down right down to... A one on that I'm that confident that the game has not progressed enough that we need a shields or mechanics type of or a sideboard or shields mechanic in that regard that's on a table ready to use resource character now in regards to resource character affecting your resources and theirs whew, let's give that about a four out of ten like yeah, I really don't know what's coming in Monarch. A <laughs> uh, character that burns cards for resources. I think this is a fantastic mechanic if it was introduced. And I think it's a possibility. Um, something so destructive that it hurts themselves in order to further their own game. I would like to see it. I'm going to put that at about a 5 out of 10. Buy a win mechanic. I think we're going to start to see the start of it within Monarch with uh, further gold produced. As for the mechanic to come in, I think it's going to be pretty low, maybe down at a 4 out of 10. Are we going to start seeing the start of it? Yes, I reckon about an 8 out of 10 with that, okay? So then my and the groups here as we just had a fun chat over it, it really isn't, but I'm the one that put the list together and I'm the one that's putting my face to this, so yeah um yeah i think it's a great list of 13 things one thing i don't want to see is a milling mechanic so you can take this down to a list of 12 but it had to be talked about i'm interested in your thoughts and discussion in regards to it it's a great lead up to monarch so keep playing your games and all versions of the game like You've got your standard, you've got your blitz, but please don't forget about Pit Fighter. I think it's got a lot to offer within the game. I was just listening to the Blitzathon, and they said they had about eight or ten people in um, that format. So that was fantastic. I'd love to see more Pit Fighter played, and I think there's various mechanics within the game that um, are attributable to it. So there we go, guys. Thank you for listening. 
get in the comments, start commenting, let us know, and we'll see you on the next video. All right, have a great one, guys. See you all.